Hi guys! Welcome back to DC to Scotland. Yeah. Um, today, eh, I'm going to show you how to make Indonesian rendang. No, we're not going to discuss about where rendang come from. Is it Indonesia, Malaysia, and stuff like that? No. But I'm just going to show you how me, as an Indonesian, the way I make my rendang that teach by my family, of my mom in this case. So, it is a little bit tricky in here because it's not the, all the ingredients you can get in Scotland. Yes, you can buy it online. You can find it in the Asian shop and um, online Asian shop or Indian shop or Thailand shop, anything like that, to find certain ingredients. Um, but I am, over the time, I'm altering my ingredients, how to make it without changing the taste that much and I still can fulfill my craving about rendang. So I would like to share that to you guys today so whoever that may be fancy or wants to know how to make rendang in UK can do that even for the local people, I mean you guys as a native. The rendang that I'm going to make today will be a beef rendang. You can, you can use chicken, of course, and uh, beef, but I will go with beef because it's more versatile due to the length of the cooking time. So get a, to get a best rendang, the, ideally you need to cook it like six to eight hours, but that's too long just to having to having to have rendang and then you need to cook six, eight hours. It's not cost effective, isn't it? So, but and then you also know that rendang is not, actually it's not a daily kind of dish that you make in your household. It's more to the one that we, when you have a big event, big celebration, wedding and stuff like that, and you're gonna make rendang. So, but nowadays you can find easily in a restaurant where you can get daily for the rendang, which is you go to the bad padang food they call it, and all that padang food restaurant you find rendang every time, anytime. So you don't need to be bothered to cook it anymore actually. But since we are here, far away from home, and sometimes you just want to make it, and you're craving it, and you there's none in here that selling it apart from those um, online seller that you can find. But again, as back to the preferences, I like my random the way I know it. Every seller has their own way to make it. So um, I just fancy my way. Right, without further ado, uh, as I said before, that my rendang will be a beef rendang because it's more versatile and I'm not going to cook big batch, I'm just going to short it into the, a kilo of beef. So let's get started. So what I will be using today is lemongrass and I smash them to get the flavor out. And I have a quarter of small red onions, chop them. I got a little bit of bell pepper. Again, I chop them. It's a small bell pepper, a quarter of it. And I have this here, which is um, red shallots. It's actually Asian type red shallot. You can get it easily here in the Indian grocery shop in Glasgow, or you find it online. It's, it's not pretty much difficult, but you can alternate them. Um, you can change them into the local shallots. You just, that's about a handful handful of it and I use some garlic which is maybe a third handful and um, right a, a randang is not a randang without a chili but because ev not everyone in this house can eat chili so I just use three bird's eye chilies so that's why I'm using this bell pepper to give a color but without being so spicy. So you get what I mean why I use bell pepper. You probably grind your eyebrows there. Why I use bell pepper for my randang is to compensate the color of the amount of the chili that original randang use. Um, 
what I have here is called candle nuts. It's not easily ready in UK, but you can get it in the Indonesian online store uh, in the UK. Um, it's called candle nut, candle nut. But if you really can't get your hands onto the candle nut, I would suggest change it to the walnut, maybe about the same amount, three, four pieces. It's, this is really just to make it thicken of your randang. Randang will be thickened with the coconut milk, but because the coconut milk in here, the, the instant one is not the same like the one back home, so I tend to use this one to thicken them. Do not use any corn flour to thicken because the result is different. Um, it, it solidified differently and uh, it makes it looks and tastes funny as well. So the other thing I use is kaffir limes, lime kaffir leaves. It's a dry one that I use. You can get it easily in major grocery store in UK. And this is actually the Indonesian bay leaf. Now, if you can get this one, um, I think you can get it in a Thai on Thai groceries online. But if not, then you can replace them with the Western bay leaf. But don't use too much because the the taste is slightly different. But if you just use a little, it give you a hint of it without taste overwhelming. So with the Indonesian one, I just use two, but with the Western bay leaf, I would say just maybe one, but small ones. Now, I also have galangal. Now this galangal, I'm, I'm not doing any promotion, but it's really hard to get. You, you can get the fresh one from the Thai online grocery, it's not a problem, but I got this one already been pasted in a jar like this, so it's handy and I don't need to go too far or order online and I just go to the local grocery and got that. Um, the next one is this. This is called palm sugar. Um, again, you can get the real, or some people call it Malacca sugar. It, this is a online, Asian online shop. You can get that Malacca sugar, uh, famous in Malaysian cooking as well or um, uh, you can change them into um, brown sugar uh, for this amount uh, for a kilo of randang I use about um, 75 gram to 100 gram this one itself I think is about 85 and next I'm using this you can get that one. I got this one from um, online as well. So it's a Kara coconut milk. This is a good one. It's very creamy and thick. It's a classic one. This is what we use back home. I'll mix it with this one because I don't want too thick. And this is only 400 milliliter. I need about 800 to 1 liter. So I just used to one is the thick one of this and the other one is just a local one local brand that i got it from bnm if i'm not wrong and last but not least is this i use this just to make it a real look of the randang once it's cooked you know the coconut that they use in indonesia they create it from the coconut itself um, and then they press and get the juice out so by cooking the juice eventually when it's dry up you will see this green um, so to mimic that I use this one blend with the instant coconut milk now that's my beef I use about one kilo uh, more or less one kilo one kilogram that's all the ingredients that I use today and how to cook it is all these onions and chilies I will blend them in the blender make it them into the paste consistency um, and then later apart from the leaves I will separate the leaf the leaf you just gonna dump it in the 
into your wok, no problem. But the rest of it, you need to blend them into the paste consistency. Now, if you like, um, I know it's not many people agree, you can put some a little turmeric in this one. Um, either turmeric roots or turmeric leaves. But uh, it's hard to find turmeric leaves in UK. Yeah, it's really hard unless you grow it yourself. I'll show you how I make it. Let's start it. Okay guys, I'll be um, owning my stove at number 5 to start with to make the wok into a temperature to make it warm. Then I'm going to put the coconut milk first so it's all cooking nicely soft it's like slow cooking it because that's how rendang it should be it's a slow cooking it over the time to let all the spices absorb into the meat itself so the wok is already nice and warm now what we're gonna do first is just pour over the coconut milk and remember I'm using two coconut milk because the meat that I use is about a kilo, so this is about 800 milliliter of coconut milk. And at this time, I will also put the paste, the spice that already become a paste like this. Put off all of them together. stir it a little next I'll be putting this palm sugar and all the dry leaf accordingly and that's the galangal and remember this um, supermarket galangal is uh, it's already been blend and make it and become a paste but they use vinegar on it but don't don't worry you can just use it it's still galangal it's only give you a little bit of um, vinegary taste in it but it shouldn't affect the dish itself then after that i'm going to put the desiccated coconut around possibly about a handful so to speak for a kilo of meat and now i'm just gonna let it simmer while stirring it slowly stir and let it simmer so from this point it depends on how your cooker gonna be um, How's, how's the heat of your cooker? I would say about five minutes. You need to keep stirring it. So as it's cooking, um, the fragrance of the coconut meal is already up and about, so you can tell that it's about to boiling soon. And also the color is already changing. You see all the palm sugar is now melted together. This is the right time and I can see a little simmering there and it's the right time for me to put in your beef the beef oh. now you still need to stir it until it's simmering in the big bubbles once you have a big bubbles of the simmer and then you going to lower down your cooker into a medium heat and let it cook for about 45 minutes and you need also to stir them occasionally in 10-15 minutes interval and you will see the water the, the milk will start it to reduce and you want to cook them 
for another half an hour so in total you will get about two hours of cooking this until the coconut milk evaporates and give you very thick consistency almost like a paste and the beef to that point then your uh, beef rendang is ready and I'll update you later how it's gonna look like throughout the video okay so while you're cooking don't forget to put some salt I would say about one tablespoon uh, three quarter tablespoon and then just let it cook and simmer you can always bulky up your rendang here if you have a big family or um, more members that come to eat or whatever with um, potato and do not put carrot because carrot has a taste sweetness taste and this is already sweet so I, I have a yard bin long here yard long bins here and I got it from Indian grocery shop so I just gonna cut them I, I cut it them into pieces like maybe three four centimeters and I'm just I'm just gonna put them now and let it let it cook it and simmer until all the the milk coconut milk evaporates and the other things about the good the goodness about this yard long yard beans is because um, it's pretty solid even though you cook it in a long time it doesn't spread or become mushy unlike the sister of this one from the French bean one that has become soft so this one will keep the shape even until uh, the finish of the cooking here it's 20 minutes after I'm still keep stirring it and you can, as you can see it's bubbling quite big at this stage um, there's another dish in Indonesia called Kalio Randang which is a halfway form of making a fully cooked randang the beef itself is already fully cooked but what I mean is when it's liquid like this they call it kalio and if you like it this way you can serve it right away by all means not a problem but because we're going to make randang then it means we're gonna cook until all these coconut milk evaporates and it's almost like paste consistency so this one right now it's about an hour of cooking level 5 on the induction cooker and now I will slower it down onto level 4 and I'll cook it until it become a paste so guys, um, I have one and a half hours of cooking right now, as you can see. It's a little bit messy, but don't worry about it. This is the way how you need to cook them into a paste consistency. But I will let it dry. This is a medium heat at the moment. So I will let it dry for another 15-20 minutes um, until it get ready. And that's you. You get the random this. Then, as you can see, these long beans here, it's still holding the shape of it. Yeah, oh, it's quite, quite hot, so it's still holding the shape of it, and it's so crunchy. What's to the last 15 minutes of the cooking random? Um, it's gonna be looks like this I know it doesn't look maybe too keen for you but believe me the taste is absolutely divine so another five minutes and once it's all dry up and that's it ready to serve thank you for watching guys I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you really try to make rundown at home if you really likes the Indonesian beef rundown.
see you later take care and see you on the next videos thank you for watching so let me the time today i'm gonna be trying a random just how i like it with cheese i love this um so i haven't been on the, on uh, my mama's channel a lot um but i am excited to present uh random mukbang let's go but bear you in mind ian has a different taste of food he can eat rice he likes rice but it's only with the randang it's only certain food that he will eat rice so but he loves cheese so much so this time is rice randang and cheese so it's like a kind of like pasta <laughs> Let me know how is oh, the taste. Oh, look at that. Look at the steam coming off that. Uh, look at the steam. You can see it. Oh my gosh. Careful, it may be spicy though. <laughs> I can handle spicy. Right. It's a bit hot. Oh, it's so hot. Is it hot? <laughs> Steaming? <laughs> like hot spicy or hot because it's just cooked? It's cooked, just cooked. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are spicy. Mm -hmm. So, guys, can I tell you something? I've got a better spice tolerance than mum. But she doesn't know that. You got what? Better spice tolerance than you. Alright, okay. So, how, how do you think about my randang? Uh, I'll give it a solid 9 out of 10 with the cheese. It's immaculate. I recommend you try muk, um, mukbang. I recommend you try uh, randang. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Peace.